the slippery rocks and pools of the tide pools are to be taken lightly, as one small step could lead to a rather unpleasant experience. Oh my goodness! Literally surrounded by water. But we're not talking about what goes on crossing the rocks, but rather on the surface of them. Today, join me as I explore the adapt and surprisingly resilient photosynthesizers of the tide pools. Plants are almost always at the bottom of almost every single ecosystem on the planet. And in marine environments, at least apart from the deep ocean, algae fills that gap in the food chain. But between the tides and the constant crashing waves, tide pool algaes have evolved some unique and creative ways to survive in this extreme environment. So down there, I see the specific algae I want to film. But the only problem is it's being crashed upon by the constant turbulent waves. So I'm going to go down there, see if I can snag a piece of algae, come up here, and see if we can film with it. Let's go. Let's continue. Gosh, that's what I'm trying to get. Flash their tide. So I got the piece of feather roll kelp. I have to admit, it doesn't taste the best. Uh, these are edible though. Um, but as you can see, this kelp looks much more peculiar than other pieces of kelp, mainly because it often attaches itself to the edges of rocks close to a very intense wave action. Um, there's not many allergies that can live and withstand that sort of pressure and constant wave action, but these guys can do it. As you can see, they have very, very um, basically strong stems right here uh, these are not plants it's actually algae uh, a type of kelp right and they have these very strong strands so that when they hit the rocks and they hit the rocks and they hit the water nothing can break it it's even hard to break like this also the way that they capture the most light is possible because if you keep getting hit and around hit around by the waves um, the light doesn't if you go to the bottom and get hit to the bottom, the light doesn't go there very well and you don't grow as much. So they have these little things on the edges. These are called nematocysts. They're little air bladders and they're made up of excess carbon dioxide expelled by the algae and they help keep the plant afloat so that it always stays upright in the water even when being banged around by the constant waves. Very cool plant for algae. right under here. This is called coralline algae, and it's a, it's a very unique type of algae. Uh, it's unlike no other, and that's because it has, it secretes um, calcium, as calcium carbonate is basically a skeleton, like coral, um, basically secretes a limestone skeleton that protects it and makes it basically inedible to pretty much everything in the tide pools. And it's because of that, it's very prevalent. Um, right, as you can see right here, it's encrusting the rock, and um, basically it binds the rocks together. Um, it's very beneficial to many marine ecosystems because it binds the rock together, uh, basically creating uh, a whole 
reef habitat and allows for more corals and other um, organisms to uh, basically inhabit the rocks here as well. So it's very beneficial and very cool. So here, you can see I'm basically crouched uh, by the rocks, and this is because this algae actually lives inside of a creature. They can be big, uh, but I haven't found very many big ones, so this one's really small. This is Zosantheli. It lives inside of an anemone, and it's actually a uh, type of marine algae um, that basically lives inside of the anemone's tissues, and it provides it with nutrients and oxygen and actually uh, accounts for basically 50% of the anemone's food. That's because um, it catches food with its tentacles, its stinging tentacles, and um, that's not really enough out here in the tide pools. So it gets all that extra nutrients from the zooxanthellae algae living inside of its tissue. Uh, so it's a very cool symbiotic relationship between an animal and a uh, algae and very cool here in the tide pools. This is red algae. It is a very common species of seaweed that lives and grows here in the tide pools. And like many other types of algae, it is at the bottom of the food chain. This algae in particular though, provides nutrients for a wide variety of organisms. Animals like sea hares, crabs, snails, and sea urchins all love to dine on this kelp. just found this amazing creature. These guys are some of the top algae grazers. This is a giant abalone. It's essentially a colossal snail. You can see it has a giant foot right here and something right here called a radula. This radula, uh, it's inside of the mouth. It's basically like a tongue with a bunch of teeth on it. And they scrape the algae with it, scrapes it into their mouth, and that's how they're able to gather so much food and nutrients from this delici delicious algae in the tide pools. A really amazing animal. algae and just take a look at it it kind of gives away the name it's called dead man's finger now it's called that because of the branching weird dry looking finger like shape of this algae and um, this it's it's amazing but also the more amazing thing the probably the most amazing thing about this um, species of algae is its ability to withstand um, being out of the water for lots of periods of time, uh, long periods of time. Um, as you can see on the top of this algae, it looks dry, right? But when I flip it over, you can see it's very, very moist and wet. And it has the ability to withstand the sunlight's rays all while being able to survive um, as compared to many of the uh, only marine algaes that live in the ocean. A uh, very cool adaptation, Dead Man's Finger. So we saw a lot of cool uh, algae out here in the tide pools. A lot of different ways that uh, organisms adapt to this rocky reef environment. Uh, so many amazing 